The International Space Station has been rightly described as one of humanity's best inventions. However, that doesn't prevent the massive structure from being the subject of controversies. One of them is that it's often visited by unidentified flying objects. Why would UFOs visit the ISS? Is something bad about to happen? And why the cover-up by the government? So, if you're ready to embark on this interstellar adventure with us, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. We love connecting with fellow space enthusiasts like you. Your thoughts, questions and speculations fuel our mission to bring you the most captivating space-related content. Join us as we deep dive into how NASA has just detected something massive docked on the International Space Station. The International Space Station is a massive spacecraft that orbits the Earth. It serves as a residence for astronaut and cosmonaut crews. The space station also serves as one-of-a-kind science laboratory. Several nations collaborated to build and operate the space station. It contains components assembled in space by astronauts and orbits the Earth at an altitude of about 250 miles. It has a top speed of 17,500 miles per hour, allowing it to orbit the Earth every 90 minutes. NASA is learning more about living and working in space by using the space station. These lessons will allow humans to travel further into space than ever before. The space station has the volume of two Boeing 747 jetliners or a five-bedroom house. It can accommodate a crew of six people plus visitors. On Earth, the space station would weigh nearly a million pounds. The station covers the area of a football field, including the end zones, as measured from the edges of itself. Laboratory modules from the United States, Russia, Japan and Europe are included. The space station has many other components beside the laboratories where astronauts conduct scientific research. The first Russian modules included the basic systems required to run the space station. They also provided crew members with living quarters. Nodes are modules that connect various parts of the station. The solar arrays extend out from the space station's sides. These arrays collect solar energy and use it to generate electricity. A long truss connects the arrays to the station and radiators on the truss regulate the temperature of the space station outside. The space station has robotic arms that assisted in the construction of the space station. These arms can also move astronauts when they go on spacewalks outside or conduct scientific experiments. Spacewalks are possible via airlocks that open to the outside and other spacecraft can connect to the station via docking ports. Ports are where crews and visitors arrive and it's the ports that have become the center of attention recently because of strange things happening at the ISS. The ports have welcomed something much more mysterious than new crews and human visitors. However, there is another set of components that attract people to the ISS because of the capabilities they give the space station, the cameras. The ISS has four cameras that allow enthusiasts to follow happenings around the space station. As part of the CR-3 mission in April 2014, SpaceX launched four high-definition video cameras dubbed HDV – High Definition Earth View Cameras to the ISS. These cameras were mounted inside a protective box on the Columbus lab of the ISS, the European Space Agency's large module added in 2008. The four cameras are collectively known as the Columbus Eye. The University of Bonn in Germany maintains a live-streaming website. The Columbus Eye program was created in collaboration with the German Space Agency. One video camera is pointed forward, one backward, one to the wake and one downward to the nadir. They are linked to the space station's computer via an Ethernet cable and beam down to Earth. Interestingly, the cameras serve multiple purposes. Apart from being footage to Earth links, NASA uses them to monitor the rate of image degradation caused by cosmic radiation, as well as the toughness of the camera housing when exposed to those space rays. The cameras are protected by a pressurized and temperature-controlled box, and how they perform may help NASA engineers decide which cameras are the best types to use on future missions. However, the space agency has been accused of deliberately shutting off these cameras during live streaming when they transmit what it doesn't want you to see. Because of its position and capacity as a space agency, NASA is in a unique position to sight strange objects that are not of Earth's origin. However, the agency has been thought to filter what it releases to the general public. Take for example a recent skirmish that left UFO enthusiasts suspecting manipulation by NASA during a live broadcast. A video clip shows an object entering Earth's atmosphere before NASA's live feed from the International Space Station abruptly cuts out. The bright object is seen descending toward Earth in the video, 
which UFO hunter Streetcap1 posted on YouTube. Then the feed magically stops. But this attempt doesn't stop the flow of information on one of the most controversial subjects ever. No matter what NASA hopes to achieve, it seems to fuel more interest in UFOs as people want to know what authorities might be trying to hide from them. For instance, UFO Hunter claims to have spotted 10 UFOs during NASA's livestream from the ISS. The sightings were made by a man who goes by the name of Jeff while watching NASA's livestream. He observed 10 unknown objects hovering around the ISS. Jeff posted a screenshot of the visuals. At the time, the ISS was flying over the South Atlantic. Jeff shared the screenshot with a YouTuber named Michael, who describes himself as a full-time Earth Watchman, a person who tracks changes that occur on and near Earth to find hidden explanations for various phenomena. The screenshots have gone viral since then, racking up hundreds of thousands of views. This incident is reminiscent of the legendary Mantel incident that shaped the UFO discussion for a long time. It also bore all the hallmarks of an official cover-up. Back then, a cover-up was easier to do as the flow of information was way easier to curtail. In 1948, calls about a UFO had been coming into Godman Air Force Base in Kentucky from nearby Fort Knox. Sergeant Quinton Blackwell, the Godman Control Tower's chief operator, had discovered the object. He later recalled that it looked like an ice cream cone topped with red. The tower crew summoned Captain Gary Carter, the operations officer, who then called the commanding officer, Colonel Guy Hicks. Four F-51D fighter jets approached Godman on their way from Marietta AFB to Standiford AFB. The Godman Tower requested Captain Mantell's flight to investigate the object. Mantell agreed and began to climb, accompanied by two other Mustangs. The fourth, running out of fuel, continued on to Standiford. Mantell reported at 14,000 feet, quote, The object is directly ahead of me and above me, now moving at about half my speed. Two of the Mustangs abandoned the chase due to low oxygen levels. Mantell, on the other hand, persisted. About an hour later, some of the tower crew heard Mantell say, quote, It appears to be a metallic object, or possible sound reflections from a metallic object, and it's enormous in size. I'm still climbing. The object is above and ahead of me, moving up to my or faster speed. I'm attempting to close for a better look. Further messages from the pilot were garbled, and contact was lost shortly thereafter. The Godman Tower also lost sight of the UFO. That was the last time they heard from Mantel. Attempts have been made to explain away the Mantel incident. For instance, claims were made that the object Mantel saw was the planet Venus. While Venus is frequently misidentified as a UFO, it appears unlikely in this case. Another theory suggested that the object was a weather balloon. However, given Mantel's description, a typical weather balloon appears to be far too small. Besides, Mantell was too experienced not to know when he was looking at a planet or a weather balloon. Another possibility was that the object was a sun dog, a kind of optical illusion. Sun dogs, also known as parhelia, are caused by sunlight being reflected off ice crystals high in the sky. They can take the form of a large bright object. This theory holds no water, however, because the object was seen from several different directions and a sun dog is dependent on the viewer, the ice, and the sun being in specific positions relative to one another. Nevertheless, the attention the Mantel incident caused was enough to get the authorities involved, and soon thereafter, Project Blue Book was born. With the aim of convincing the public that flying saucers could be explained, after numerous UFO sightings during the Cold War era, the Air Force established Project Blue Book in 1952 to explain away or debunk as many reports as possible. It was supposed to mitigate potential panic and shield the public from a genuine national security problem and apparently technological phenomenon that was beyond human control and was not Russian but represented an unfathomable potential threat. Behind the scenes, however, authorities faced a sobering reality. Well-documented UFO encounters involved multiple trained observers, radar data, photographs, ground marks, and physical effects on airplanes. This made it difficult to simply dismiss UFOs as pseudoscience or trivial. And what was the outcome of Project Blue Book? The Air Force Director of Intelligence, Major General John Sanford, announced that between 1,000 and 2,000 reports had been analyzed, with the majority of them explained. However, he admitted, quote, a certain percentage have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. We are now attempting to resolve this group of observations. So, even if the result was not conclusive, it did achieve something. For instance, astronomer Alan Hynek, a UFO skeptic, became a believer. 
They concluded that UFOs were a genuine phenomenon in desperate need of scientific investigation. With hundreds of cases in the Blue Book files still unsolved, he also noted that many of the closed cases were resolved with absurd, often infuriating explanations, sometimes ironically provided by Hynek himself. It seems, however, that we are getting closer to knowing the real truth about UFOs from official sources. Apparently, the authorities are not done yet with UFO investigations. NASA, yes, the same old NASA, has convened a first-of-its-kind panel to investigate what the government chooses to refer to as Unidentified Aerial Phenomena or UAPs. Bringing together experts from physics to astrobiology, the 16-member panel will conduct its investigation solely on unclassified sightings and other information gathered from civilian, government and commercial sectors. The panel will spend nine months developing its own strategy for organizing and studying sightings before recommending a roadmap of potential UAP data analysis by the agency going forward. Its first report is scheduled to be released in mid-2023. But NASA is not the only governmental organization investigating UFOs or UAPs. NASA's investigation is distinct from a recently formalized Pentagon-based investigation into UAPs reported by military aviators and analyzed by US defense and intelligence officials. Let's hear what you think about UFOs in the comment section below.